I, I can at least do the roll call. Um, I'm here, Pete Thomas. Carolyn Jim. Neff. Okay, Carolyn's there. Jennifer Remillard. Jen's there. Kelly Sherast. Okay. Uh, let's see, you there. Okay, Kelly and uh, Diane, you're there. Diane Lawrence here. And Holly uh, Lankowski. Okay. Okay, we'll wait and see if uh, Jay comes along, but um, let's proceed. We're at 9.642. And are there any um, motions to add any items to the agenda for tonight? Um, this is Jennifer. Hi. I just wanted to um, add on an item for uh, seniors. Okay. For seniors. <laughs> Is that the title? It's just an idea, Senior Center uh, Project. Okay. Great. Um, well, let's move uh, forward. Uh, first item on the agenda is to adopt the minutes uh, from the December 27th meeting. Thank you very much, Holly. I apologize for missing that meeting. I was with family up in Vermont and the light didn't dawn on me until almost midnight and I had a, <laughs> a conference call. So thank you for it's stepping no worries. In. Things come up, it's no worries. Uh, have a motion to approve the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes from um, our last meeting. All right, second. A second. Any, dis any discussion? Nope. Changes, whatever. Okay, we're going to um, approve the minutes um, as provided. Just, just so I know what to do, Pete, do I send back and just say um, it's now an official post and they take the draft off? Um, I tell you what, um, it's send it to me and I will do the, what I do usually, which is send both the draft and the finished meet minutes. Okay. I can take care of that. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Pete. Yep. Uh, did, did you guys... At least to um, show a hand, so you approve that those minutes. No, we're going to get to that. It okay. just was clarifying. Okay. okay, thank you. Sorry. No All worries. Those in favor? Hi, Holly Lankowski. Hi, Jen Remillard. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Kelly Trust. Hi, Pete Thomas. I I think technically, uh, can Carolyn and Peter vote if they weren't at the meeting? No, they can't. They have. They can't, they're supposed to abstain because they weren't here. Okay. Oh, you, I, if you read the minutes, you can, you can vote yes. But how are you going to accept them as being a representation of the meeting? If you weren't here to listen to it, does that matter? No. You know, Alex, as long as I watch the it. recording. Parted? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can. <clears throat> if they watch the recording, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I think so long as you don't have any objections to it or try and amend something that you weren't at, that's... Yeah. Okay, I, ju I just don't know what the protocol is, so I'm asking. Okay. That's all. All right, we'll record it as voted or approved unanimously. How's that? Mm -hmm. We still haven't got through to Jay. Well, okay, well, let's move on to the next uh, post office cancellation stamp. Um, um. There was an expectation that we'd have something to look at, but- uh, So I have something, but hold on a second. Alex, can I have permission to share the screen, please? I could get this thing on my screen to go away. Yep, oh, you, should, um, you should be good to go. Thank you. Yep. Give me one second. Here we go. 
So, okay, so I still have to add some data into here with the announcement portion, um, but I worked on, sorry, I, I have this stupid thing on my screen that won't go away and I'm trying to get it to shrink and it's not. Oh, that was cool. Um, so what I did here, okay, it, it won't let me do anything here. Okay, sorry, I, I'm having issues with my laptop and I do not know how to get rid of this thing. So, <laughs> we'll close you. <laughs> you sure? Quit, yep. there we go. You can only kick your laptop. Ah, just did something. No, leave it alone. I have this malware bytes thing that keeps popping up and I can't get it to go away on my main screen. Go away, all right, there we go, sorry. So what I what I was trying to do and, and I was struggling with, with uh, visual to be quite frank, um, which is why I haven't done as much on it as I should. So what I did was I found, um, some canceled stamps, which is the background. I didn't know if people thought this was too busy, um, but I found samples. Um, if you can see here, I found Hatfields. I found um, Bethel, Vermont, Plymouth's 400th, North Adams 100th, just to give a sample oh, of wow. you know what's there in um, for people to look at. Visually, um, when we go to print it out, I don't know if it will be too busy or not. Um, so what I wanted to do was in this box up here and was originally I thought about making multiple boxes to kind of have host the information. Um, this is just the start of it. But visually, I wanted to know what people saw because I didn't want to put a lot more into the description part up top if people didn't like the background and visual and they wanted something different. Um, because trying to block off this announcement portion at the top uh, has been a little complicated. So what do you think about the samples down below? I think it's important to have samples. I agree. People, uh, you know, that triggers people's um, well, you want them to obviously to be creative, but also you want to, you have to give them some kind of framework to work with. And, you know, the, the Plymouth 400, I mean, that's wonderful. Um, but it certainly is Im important to have like the Hatfield one there because they just did it. So, you know, and then the North Adams is another sample and so is Bethel. That's really, I, I think it's wonderful. Um. Does anyone else have any feedback on design, I, Diane? Uh, I actually do like, I like the samples that you put down there, but the word, the samples, take it off the blue and tuck it right down under. And instead of the samples, how about the word postal samples? So that was something I found online. I can't edit that. It's just a picture. Okay. Um, but I kind of feel like bringing it down is, let me see if I can make it smaller. Work. Yeah, I like it smaller. Um, just it's, do you like it over layering? Because I'm afraid if we have it down below, does it blend in too much or? Oh, I don't think so. How much is going on the top? So much content. I, I didn't hear you. <clears throat> How much text is going on the top? So all of this is pretty much going to be full um, because I'm taking the information from the uh, post office descriptions so there's like three or four blocks of info they had which was why i was actually looking to here i'm just going to show you this visual for a second um i was thinking of shrinking down the boxes to contain the data oh let me get it to move like this here have another one here and then an overlapper here but i didn't know if that was easily readable or not. So that's why I expanded it to be just what I had before. 
what, I, I think it would be too confusing to have multiple boxes that people have to get all the instructions from. Okay. So I, I like the one big blue box like on top. Okay. So, and I'm I, wondering if you could um, collapse the whole um, announcement into one line, even if you have to put the font a little smaller, and then that will give you more space. Uh, the, this, the, this up here? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely make it um, smaller font. I have it at 22. I think I can make it an 18 like this. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh, Here. Perfect. And, perfect. And then, then can you, you know, shore it up so the lines go up and you have... <laughs> Hold on one second. I can, yeah, it's in a, a box. So I just oh, have can, to move can you just the, shrink, oops. So Can you just squeeze the box down? Hold on one second. Yeah, once you get all the information, you'll know how to size it up. But I do like the stamps you have in the background. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I, for whatever reason, Holly, I don't know if that's a fixed box. I think it's a fixed. You can't get into the corners? See, it's locked. Hold on, when I pull this up here, see those little, yep. little you can't, blocks there? You can't there? go into the corners? And In for that it. one section, no. Up here, yes. Well, can you just do a different text box that's not as big? No, it's a, um, oh, what do you call it? I'll, I'll play around with it, but it's pretty much a. Uh, Can't you grab that little arrow at the bottom in the middle and just push it up? Well, that shrinks the entire blue box altogether like this. Really? No, not that one. Under that. the word pictorial. It doesn't okay. just shrink that. Okay. So I'll play around with it, but you all like this this format here. Yeah, yeah I, don't think the I, stamps re I think the stamps really highlight the fact of what it's all about. Yeah. So, okay. One at a time. Sorry, it's just hard with to hear everyone. I agree with uh, Holly. I think it's too confusing to have the separate boxes. I know what you're saying, but you know, it's having all the information all together. I think is a lot less confusing. Great. Just wanted uh, the Jennifer, feedback. That's wonderful. I mean, really, this is really, this is better than I envisioned it. Seriously. Thank you. When you um, about it. So I will work on this and I will get this out by the end of the week. Um, I just didn't want to go too much further before I got feedback as to if you liked the larger text box, if you liked the background, because then it was, you know, trying to come up with another concept. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, you know, sometimes trying to figure out what people want to see or, you know, what you all have in mind would be helpful. Holly? Um, two things. On the um, stamp that is above Hatfield, it almost oh. looks like it's cut off. Um, so I don't know if that one can get pushed over a little. It's not, it's the exact picture from what's, oh, you mean like size wise? I can push it over to the right more. So it lines up on the edge if that's what you're referring to. Yeah, it just almost looks like it got cut off the way you're showing it. And then yeah, it's, can, it's can not, it's move? the actual way that the uh, post office has it in their sample thing, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> and then um, second of all, um, I, I have three things. So second of all, um, if you, are able to pull the samples down just a little. It looked like there was some room at the bottom that might give your blue box a little more room. Yep. And then third of all, I think it would be important in the description stuff that's going in the blue box to say, um, to help you get creative, you can look at the samples below that other towns have used. Um, I'm gonna put a reference to, um, to you know, view the samples below for for you know for your ideas or whatnot so yeah, if yeah. you have a specific verbiage you'd like in there please feel free to email me that no no it's just um a good point or two it will be good but i i like the start of it i think it's great great thank you and um right. i'm moving some stuff around and uh i'll probably be able to send this out saturday so that way everyone can um, give me feedback if you want any more changes and then i don't know if we are able to have a special meeting to just vote on this or um, if we need to, because we, we, I think we had talked about Holly 
Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. We wanted to send this out during March's vacation. No, February vacation. February vacation, okay. Uh, which is yeah. um, the week of the 21st. So okay. we probably want to get it out that before that week. So we, we have truly till next week sometime, but we could, all we need is 48 hours to, to um, post the agenda and then we can do this one item. Okay. Thank um, you for everyone's flexibility and my apologies for not getting it done sooner. And you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Jennifer, um, is there going to be a, a listing of rules for who is eligible for this contest? Is it going to say something like townspeople in addition to the protocol for the post office? Will there be more listed? Um, I thought we had discussed that it was going to go to uh, just the schools. Okay. Is and there a time limit for when it has to be sent in? Is that all been uh, discussed or... Uh, other than um, I, have to, I have to pull up my minutes, but I believe we did establish that. Did we did we? do that. Okay. All righty. I wasn't quite sure if we had that. No, nope. I'm double checking my notes. Okay. And just make sure if it's for school children, um, a lot of it is really clear. I thought we, um, so we're, if we send it out during the February vacation, did we want it back? Um, was it May or, sorry, I'm just looking through my notes. I believe we were gonna go through the end of June. It was the end of the school year. Yeah, okay, yeah. alrighty. But we don't wanna send it out the week of February break, I mean, a February vacation. We wanna send it out that weekend of Valentine's Day, you know, that 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. So it goes home in the, backpacks for the kids to do something over the hot uh, you know break and then we could send a reminder um for the april break as well maybe okay so I have multiple I, dates down here holly do you have i had in my notes we were going to get it out early may so the contest would run may 2nd through september 2nd so we weren't going to do February? Did we decide that? No, I thought we wanted to do it over the vaca summer vacation because I thought there was concern about, um, what do you call it? You had talked about Carolyn bringing up the clap fact that the private schools might do an art class for it. And you felt that was an unfair advantage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, right. Sorry, I forget we had. I forgot that we had that discussion. Yes. No, I. I just know we had multiple discussions. So Diane, thank you for bringing that up because I had multiple dates in here. So the dates I had written were May second through September second, okay. which means we could wait for the April vacation, um, and and announce it after the April vacation, um, and then. As Jennifer said, that way it would be dictated more into the summer months. Yep. Yeah. So the contest will run May 2nd through September 2nd. Okay, that was the other dates I had. I wanted to, all right. Um, and it's open to all school age children. Yeah. Is that what we wanna put in here? Well, did we decide all of Union 38 or did we decide your field and frontier, which would mean middle school, high school and elementary school? You're only talking about Deerfield Elementary and then the high school and middle school. I'm, I'm Sorry, Luna's barking, right answer. Deerfield Elementary and frontier. I, I feel like it should be Deerfield Elementary and Frontier. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any big deal if we open it up to all of Union 38, but you kind of want to give Deerfield little kids more. Yeah. yeah. I, I would feel comfortable with Deerfield Elementary and Frontier. And I have a note that we also said we would extend this to the tech school for Deerfield residents. Yeah. Oh, Holly, that's right. Thank you for remembering that. 
What a good note taker you are. Yeah. Oh, wicked. Because we we went back and forth with all this. We had a. We huge did. Meeting. We did. We did quite a bit. So then we don't need a special meeting, Jennifer, and you could have a a little breathing room. Oh, we could definitely have more time together. Thank you. So I'll have it finished um, before our February meeting, and. Um, I'll uh, maybe send it out to everyone for some feedback. Don't CC everyone on that. Just email me directly and give me any feedback on it once you send it out. Why don't you just blind CC everybody? That way there's no whoopses. Yeah, that, that's what I would plan on doing. But sometimes people add people accidentally. So just to make sure. Um, so yeah. Thank you for the feedback tonight. I will make some changes and um, big bones. Go with that. So thank you for the positive feedback and the constructive criticism. It makes my job so much easier to, you know, when I when I kind of have an idea of what everyone else likes or doesn't like. <laughs> well, it's certainly easier to react to a draft than uh, trying to come up with the whole thing yourself. It really yeah. is. It looks really good. A very Thank nice you. draft of mood. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi, Jay. Did you get to see the draft? Yes. Okay. Jay, raise your hand and, and say I'm here. Yeah, we we've already taken the uh, okay. Jay Stryker in attendance. Okay. I'll put you down. Jay. All right, moving on. Status of the wood down trees. Are there oh. any updates from FOD? Oh my gosh. Bill Lamore supposedly is in Florida for a winter, whatever, respite. So I am going to get the information on these trees and <laughs> come well, high I, water or whatever. I'm I think, we I think we shifted the burden off of you, Carolyn, last time because we voted that the Friends of Deerfield will take on that project. I know, so, but you still got to find out how many board feet. All right. All are. right. Well, if, if you're finding um, it out for Friends of Deerfield, then. Yep. So I, I, we got figured out the inch and a half. And so I now will make sure that we get, figure out how many board feet an inch and a half cut. And then we'll, then I'll turn it over to Jennifer. But okay. I can see that this is worth me just calling and calling until we get, you know, Bill to respond to us. Who's in Florida? Who is in Florida right now? Yes, <laughs> apparently. Apparently. I, I've been leaving messages and someone said, Well, he's in Florida. Didn't you know? And I'm like, No. <laughs> so anyway, um, we're going to track it down. All right, moving on. Holly uh, parade entry documents. Yep, I finally got things put together and I got a package out to Carolyn and Carolyn was going to refer those over for legal review. And I presume I'll hear back from Carolyn once that's done. I sent them, uh, Holly uh, sent them all in a package to me and I forwarded them to um, Casey to send to Lisa. And I will find out what Lisa has, you know, just to review, so. I, I don't know when she's going to get back to us, but I'll make sure we try to do it for next month. I'm um, just making a note to follow up on that tomorrow morning. All right, excellent. Thanks, Holly. That's You're a welcome. Good job. That's a good job done. <laughs> well, there yeah. were two documents that were pretty involved, so I didn't want to make mistakes with them, but I think we've got a good template for starters. Excellent. That's great. That's pretty exciting. We, um, I mean, it's it's really moving forward, everybody. This is getting really good. It is. Right, next, uh, next item on the agenda is kickoff weekend lighting. Um, okay, so get together with the committee. So I spoke with Kate. I spoke with Kate Lawless of the um, town common committee. And she wanted to know what we had in mind. So if we're just gonna say, do whatever you want, we can say that, but I didn't know if you wanted to have input and if so, what do you want to do? Are we gonna do more lighting than just the cake? 
Yeah, I thought we wanted to do something with um, metal. Like, um, I've seen it where it's like bendable. I don't know if it's what floral, if it's wiring or some kind of metal that has a protective coating over it that you could string lights around, you know, to make the number 350 or something else. Um, but I'm not sure where you find that material per se. Um, and I also didn't know if, you know, while they're doing the town common down in South Village, because that's what their committee has been focused on, um, you know, if, if they're willing to take on uh, Old Deerfield as well, or if that would be left up to us. So I wanted to come back to to all of you to see what you wanted because she asked me, you know, I'm she can present it to their committee. She just wanted to know what we had in mind. I think when we had originally spoke about this, we were going to do the cake um, off five and ten at South Deerfield Fire. Yep. Um, and that's going to be the big thing there. And then at Old Deerfield and South Deerfield Commons, we were going to do as you just described, something that would kind of accent the other pieces of town with some semblance. Um, I don't think necessarily from my perspective, I have, I mean, you know, kind of in embracing any particular thing, maybe they would have an idea um, okay. or, or want to take on something. Are they aware that we're going to do one night for each area? I didn't go into the specifics about that, but I, I kind of gave an overview as to we were looking to do something in each of the commons in addition to the cake on five and 10 at the at the fire station. Um, so, you know, it was to kind of unify the entire community. Um, but I am more than happy to, you know, go over all of that with her, not a problem. Um, her, the, the committee meetings that they've been having for this, um, for the town common have been mostly focused on the revive, you know, the redesign. So I didn't think it appropriate to pop in for that. Plus I've had the senior housing meetings spend the same nights. Um, so I addressed it during our CCI uh, meeting that we had. Um, so I can I can follow up with her via email and just let her know what we what we discussed tonight and have her bring it to them and let her know all those details. I think, um, go ahead, go, Carolyn. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I think, you know, we might want to um, see if they have any particular ideas because then we might want to do something similar with the old Deerfield site. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, of course, wouldn't include them if they're only focusing on the South Deerfield common. Um, yeah, I can ask the, that question in my email just to say, you know, I know that your group mostly is focused on this. But are you, you know, would you be willing to do both locations? And this is what we thought of. But if you have another design or another idea in mind, um, we're open to it. So, um, you know what I was thinking um, for the cake next to the cake, we should have a fairly, you know, um, large 350th that would be separate from the cake because there's plenty of space next to, you know, in the area of the fire station for the cake and then maybe 350th next door because I mean people don't necessarily know driving by what you know that there's like 350 there I mean it's not it doesn't catch your eye as much I mean you catches your eye but it doesn't really have the explanation clearly and then whatever we do pick for old Deerfield I agree with Holly I I just think it should be the same, whatever you put in the South Deerfield, you should be putting in Old Deerfield. And whether it's just the outline of a cake with 350 inside at a, at a smaller level, you know, than you would have like just plain big 350. So if we could think about three different, two smaller and then one larger 350 kind of thing. Carolyn, I sort of was playing around the other day. Can you see what I'm showing? Nope. Yep. Back it up just slightly because it's not the whole it's not the whole thing. Just you hold have. it back a little bit towards you, Diane. Okay. 
But a little bit up. You could see next up. to the cake. Up. That would be very well, closer to you and up. Oh okay. yeah. I don't. I don't think when you're driving by the cake uh, that that would be really too good because you need the just the 350. I think because you. But I'm thinking you're field 350. You might be inclined to go here even if you didn't catch this part. But well, yeah. I think that you I think what you're coming up with, what what you're coming up with is ideal for the South Deerfield and Old Deerfield Common because people are on foot and they're slow driving through. You're you got the speed bumps in Old Deerfield and you got the um, four way stop in South Deerfield. So people can take that detail in, which is excellent. So that's perfect. But I I still think we. We have to have some explanation. You're not, you don't get foot traffic out by the fire station. And so you gotta have some explanation of that cake. So, yeah, it's, so you're in a car, you're far away, yeah. you know, you're far, there's quite a bit of space really when you look, look at the South Deerfield fire sign the next time you drive by, it's quite a space. And then you imagine the cake there, even though the cake seems like it's pretty big, it's not, there's not a lot of explanation to that. And then the car goes by. But on top of the cake, I mean, like if you saw it at Hatfield or if you drive by Wheatley, it has, you know, it would say Deerfield 350 and it has it along the sides too, right? The 350. Yeah. Lit up, is it lit up? Yeah. And it's all lit up. Okay, it is. Okay. I just uh, so remember it lit up with the numbers. That's all. Yeah. yeah, so I think the idea of doing something, you know, larger at each of the other locations, but I think, you know, you would be able to see the 350 lit up at night and during, you know, during the day, you could still see the printing. Yeah, as long as you can. I, I just don't remember seeing that 350. Yeah, that if was, you drive by, I, I'm, I'll go down. the Waitley location, maybe you'll be able I will. to see it. I will. <laughs> I just felt like we had to have some explanation that people could oh, I, see from cars yeah. quite far away versus, and the, and the thing that Diane was coming up with makes sense from a, you know, uh, you know, when you have slower and you're right next to it kind of thing. Well, Carolyn, the cake is like 20 feet wide and 10 feet tall, the great big ball at the top saying 350 or so. As long as it, you can see it at not, you know, see it well enough. Maybe the maybe the question is where do we position it? I mean, there's a lot of space, but if you position it as close as you can to the highway, you're going to get, you know, right off that uh, where 116 comes into five and ten. Man, if you're coming down that road, you're going to be looking right at it, and the other people are going to be passing right by it. I, I wouldn't think. Yeah, if we put it south of the South Deerfield yeah. sign, you are, that's true, you're at the intersection. So, okay. I was just paranoid that we wouldn't have as much visibility. Well, as, I, think you'll, I think you'll okay. see it. Yeah, All right. Um, so a couple of things. One, um, we have to do a proper setback at the fire station. So it can't be like right there hanging on the road uh, because of um, just, plowing and other purposes, it's gotta be set back enough. And something in my head was more than 10 feet, but uh, Carolyn, do you remember when we met with the fire department? Um, I know well, they there, said it Yeah, there's be. a ditch. Yeah, there's a ditch there anyway. I think right. when we get closer to it, we can go out and figure out where. Yeah, we'll have to just stake it out or something. But um, what Diane did, I think is a nice start and maybe Diane, if you could just send like that picture to Jennifer, she's going to talk to um, that Kate. Um, yeah, because okay. if we used what's on the web page, which is our logo, which is the mountains, which is then, what trying to do, yeah. And then the deer field and the two dates. And then um, I like what you did 350 historic years. Um, I think that says a lot. Um, I think that's kind of a nice start for us to consider. Mm -hmm. I do too. And you could do it back to back and actually have it at the southern, towards the southern end of that common. So the people coming up uh, Sugarloaf Street or going down from whichever direction are gonna see 
the sign one way or the other. You won't see the back of the sign, but have two faces on the sign so that it's read from both sides of the comma. So are we talking the sign or the the lighted display? Well, it would be lit, a lit. How about a lit sign? And that, yeah, that that's what I mean, lit. A, lit, a lit, something that would light up at night. Well, if we're gonna have this lighting thing, you know, this event. Um, a, lit, a lit sign. Right. Because that was the whole, the whole idea was to kind of make everything similar, you know, having the lit up 350, um in north you know old south and then with the cake because it was just going to be a lighting ceremony for each of them is what we had discussed doing on that uh january 14th whatever weekend that was um yeah yeah Martin Luther King. 2023 on the event item that i sent out to everybody before um is, does anybody have a preference should we be doing the cake the first night and then the other two commons the other nights I think so. I think having the cake be the first since it's the biggest would be appropriate, in my opinion. I don't know what everyone else thinks. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, it's it's January 14th, 15th, and 16th. Yeah. So that Friday night we would do the the big the cake lighting and then the other two would be the smaller ones. Yep. I I think we also have the opportunity to having found a group that's willing to participate is in a sense, uh, I, I like the idea of the sign and all we could just suggest that as part of it and just let them run with the rest of it. Yes. Yeah, I, I think kind of letting them run with something, but you know, having something lit up at least right. to let them know right. that is important because we want people to participate and want to be a part of that. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's right. I think that's a good compromise and just, you, you've got one idea, but if they can incorporate that into the rest of it, just let them run with it. We'll just steer, remember? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I have that in the back of my mind. <laughs> yeah, if you could find the people and, and give them direction and ask them if we've got a group that like the people with the common, that would be excellent. Yeah. Okay, any other comments here? So Jen, you'll, you'll talk to uh, uh, Kate and see if, if she's yeah. brought into this. Yeah, and then uh, I'll have her check with the, their committee and get back to us. Yeah. Out of curiosity, all the signage is, will the town department be available to put signs in for people? In case they're wondering who's digging holes and sticking posts in the ground? Oh yeah. We, we can just, just wondering you know one of those logistic things yeah okay I'll make, sure that, I'll make sure that that happens well if we have a clue that something's going to need you know appropriate digging we might want to prepare ahead um because of frost and that kind of stuff and also um the deer on the south deerfield common um, and how everything would kind of work after the holiday uh, period. Yep. Well, you and you, and if we're actually going to dig, we need to make sure it's we have to contact Dig Safe anyway. Correct. So, yeah. Especially on the common. Yeah, it's kind of packed in there. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> There's stuff all over. Oh my gosh. All right, uh, moving on, do we, uh, we're on arrangements to cover events for with FCAT. That seems to be, um, we, we made some strides in there. The question was, do we need one or more still photographers? I don't think so. I think a lot of people take photos. You could get them to upload them to, you know, social media and, and just save them all. I think that's well, I mean, we can always at some point we could we could have a, an idea of a cost of a still photographer, but I have to tell you the quality of pictures uh, that people do is is really excellent nowadays. And um, I think if we just ask people to send them in collectively, 
so that we can save any pictures of any of our events. I mean, we need we need to advertise that. I think. Actually, yeah. That's a good idea. And ask people because some people would get some photos, action photos that would be like, it, say for instance, the parade. You know, people could be sending in all kinds of different angles of or stuff that's happening at the parade. And, you know, yes, some of the pictures would be not so good and some of them be chopped off, but we might have like one or two that are like exceptional and you just never know. So we just, whatever event we're doing, I mean, I just oh. picked the parade, but somehow we should be collecting, we should have an, uh, some place that people can email these photos for archival purposes. And I think FCAT could probably take stills from whatever they produce too to possibly have you know some some still shot pictures yeah from their I, I think so too chris um collins is unfortunately um has not been well lately but i did talk to jonathan um who is is the acting um director at the moment and he is really a hundred percent on board so we should we're, we're not going to have any problem with ask cat it's on their calendar um we just you know I would want to make sure we forwarded one as we solidify everything. We want to forward these events to um, Jonathan for his calendar as soon as possible, say in another, you know, by the summertime, we want to make sure that Jonathan has everything on the next year's calendar. Can people just post to the web pages that we've already set up and, and then we can just download them from there? Well, people can post to the social media like Facebook or Instagram uh -huh. or tag us in Instagram, but they can't, no one has access to upload stuff to the website other than me and Jen Gannett. Okay, but I mean, on Facebook or, or something like that, and you can take mm -hmm. those pictures and could upload them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. We so share them on our page as a, like a visitor posting. And then we can share that on the main page and save them all. Okay, so I, that sounds perfectly fine uh, to me. I mean, rather than worry about an individual and costs and everything else, I think there's going to be plenty of people taking pictures. But Holly? Um, I think that all of that is ideally going to come together. But I think if we want specific things uh, that we make sure we cover, um, and get photos of, whether it be the three common lightings. Um, I think we maybe need to designate, you know, a key person at each event that might just get a few photos. So if we don't get others sent in, we at least have someone who's going to represent the event and get a few photos. That's an excellent idea, actually. Then I think in addition to... Um, FCAT, I think we should also invite the press to all of them because they may get some great shots too. Mm -hmm. We can go ahead and send out press releases, you know, like within a month in advance of each event. So the press does know what's going on and they can show up hopefully. Yeah. Chris Larby is our reporter right now. He is excellent. So yeah, he seems to be doing a great job. Yeah, he writes really good stories, but he also is very good about attending events, meetings. Mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, I think we're any any other comments. I think we all feel pretty comfortable with this. All right, moving on to laser cut Christmas tree ornaments. Uh, we had a potential couple of companies identified. The question was images. Do we want to use the 350th logo or do we want to expand it out to other kinds of things? I, I, I don't think the logo is enough to put on the tree, truthfully. <laughs> I, I think we have to expand it out, but I'm. Uh, I thought the deer was a nice ornament. 
if I looked at that was the uh, Dan, the Danforth. I was looking at those. The Chem, I couldn't get into that site. But the Danforth, I thought the, the, the deer was a nice ornament. They had a few other ornaments without going crazy. Stuff that was more appropriate for our town, I think. I think there could have been one that looked like a barn even, if I'm remembering right. So is it a question of the shape then? Or I guess the logo I thought is being on whatever shapes they, just, they could cut. So if they could cut a deer and a barn and whatever. whatever. Where, oh, where, where, where's the discussion going? Is here? this well? Is this a friends of Deerfield thing? And what are we trying to figure out? What what you want the ornament people to do for Deer for a Deerfield ornament, a special order? Is this what it's trying to be resolved? Or I'm I'm maybe I missed part of that meeting. Well, at the last meeting, Holly wanted to know if we could if if it was worth doing something where it wasn't a fundraiser, so it was more to create just at cost. But not a fundraiser. OK. Well, I only brought up the comment because um, just as what Diane said, I didn't know if it was for this committee, if it was going to be a for sale item. Um, but if it's going to be you know, whatever they're created for, pe people could buy them at cost, then I guess that would fall under the umbrella of us doing it. But then there's the logistics of it all. I know Jen, Jen had brought up um, that Casey, and, and I apologize, I'm looking at my notes now. We need to ask Casey, if an item is sold at no profit, can we sell them through the town? But I don't know, Carolyn, if there's any history with anything. Oh, no, I don't, I don't actually know about that. All right, let me ask. When I'm following up on the parade documents, I'll follow up on that question. But let me ask this, who will be taking that on to do the ordering and all that stuff? Yeah. From the steering committee. Um, does it have to be a steering committee member or can we try to solicit someone from the community? I have a question. Diane? Um, how long does it take to get an order from once a uh, design is uh, decided? Uh, to actually get a product in hand. How long does that take this? It depends on where you're ordering it from. Each each company may have their own specific timeline. And if they make stuff in country now, um, you know, while supplies, uh, the supply chain has been better, there may still be some hiccups. Um, so I don't know. I can't answer that question. Well, is this something we want for Christmas? 2022 or can we this something we work on and have it ready uh, for the actual 350th year of 2023 and sort of just get more ideas or input about what we're doing on this if it's especially if it's not really a profit for profit item it's it doesn't seem to be something we need to do to accomplish something else well, I can let you know that Friends of Deerfield had wanted to do a fundraiser with an ornament. So, um, because that would have been, you know, that would be a potential profit maker for people who collect those. Okay. Um, so, so, so why don't we have Friends of Deerfield take it over? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was, okay. I have no problem with that, but it's not going to be a tree cut thing. It's going to be something else. Oh no, that's all right. Whatever, I, I mean, it's up to your committee, Jennifer. It's fine. Yeah. No, I, it was just going on with um, with the companies. I think that you sent out. I think the pewter and something else. They looked really nice. So, well, I um, chem chem whatever that was. That's the one that does the historic Deerfield ones. You know the houses, yep. those ones, and um, I I can't can't remember but it it, it was current this year so the, the they they are ordering from that company this year so um if i felt like it you know their ones were the i don't want to say similar caliber as the one silversmith but very similar so um you know the fair you can't if you look at the fairground ones that um lunt silversmith did and you look at the historic houses one that chem that chem company did chem art or whatever it was they're yes. very they're not 
uh, dissimilar. You wouldn't know really know the difference. Okay. So it's all that laser technology that just you, you put in the pattern and you get out a nice product. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't tell if it, you know, one silversmith used a better, you know, a, a slightly thicker metal or, I mean, I really can't tell that much difference, but um, I'm just saying that it is very similar and it looks really nice on the tree. So, you know, the, the, I couldn't track down any other information. I was really disappointed. That's all. There aren't a lot of places out there that make them. I started searching and like they'll say made in the USA for different organizations that sell them, but they don't specify which designer and it's so hard. And you would think that manufacturers would want that information out there. Um, so thank you for finding that, Carolyn. No, no problem. <laughs> I just couldn't, I was just flabbergasted that it was not more of a common thing because I'm like, just about everybody, you know, buys Christmas ornaments. And if you have some special co commemoration, you would want something done. And it was like, well, how come there's not more? That would be a cool uh, idea. Yeah. yeah, I just can't believe that there's not more companies out Jay, there. Jay, why aren't you carving wood and melting pewter to make little ornaments? <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that what they did 350 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> right, that's, that's about what it would have been. Uh, Make a wood mold. Maybe we could get some Cub, Cub Scouts uh, with a little hammers and chisels and do it as a community <laughs> project. Well, the, um, idea, the idea has potential, Jen. It really does. I, uh, the not-for-profit, you may want to use your energies for something else, to, for, for profits, at least for the start. Yeah, no, we'd like the Friends of Deerfield wants to do it as a fundraiser. I yeah. was just mentioning, you know, the at cost because Holly had mentioned that at our last meeting um, to see. So, so that, that, that's kind of why I wasn't sure why it was on our docket. So anyway, yeah, it's it's fine. All right, um, so let's uh, let's take a vote on this. All all in favor of uh, letting the Friends of Deerfield move ahead with their for this for, as their project. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Diane. Hi, Holly. Hi, Kelly. Jay, you're muted. I think your hand was up though, Jay. Yeah, Jay Stryker, agreed. And uh, I abstain. Oh, All right, it's unanimous. No, yeah. it's not. I abstain. I'm not allowed to vote on those things. Well, you can't, so it's unanimous for everybody else. Yes. <laughs> Unanimous and then one abstention. All right. It has to be that way because I don't want to have anyone to come back and say that I did something inappropriate. It's it's it's, uh, it's in the minutes being taped. Alex is taping it for us. All right, moving on to the anniversary cake disposition. Okay, so I have been in communication with double checking her name. And um, from Leverett, and it looks like they are going to take the cake for 2024. They had um, several questions. How hard would it be passed to be to pass on once they were done with it? Um, and there, um, I, I, I wanted to know if you felt it was appropriate if I connected Ludlow and them to see how they could work out maybe transferring the cake to them mid-year or, excuse me, um, you know, when they were done, because her research said that Ludlow's date of incorporation was 1775. Um, even though Lolo had asked us about the cake for 2024. So um, I'm thinking if it's okay with all of you, I'm gonna connect Anne and Kathy from Ludlow um, because it looks like Leverett is going to take the cake from us when we are finished with it. I sent them uh, Peter's description uh, packet with all of the way that, it, you know, the transfers and everything else. So okay. thank you so much for you know, for doing all that work, Pete. Um, it's really helpful. And 
you know, at this point, it um, we just have to figure out when they would take it from us because their incorporation date is at the beginning of the year of 2024. Um, so I just wanted to, to check with all of you if you felt like January 1st, they can come get it. I mean, obviously weather dependent, <laughs> if there's a blizzard, obviously things are gonna be a little bit different, but um, you know, I, I didn't know what you wanted me to, to tell them. I think one of the things that uh, I observed there is that there's a lot of prep work that needs to be done before you actually put the cake there. So they can move ahead with getting the platform set up and ready to receive the cake, which means that it's a simple take it apart, move it, which won't be as weather dependent as if you have to start from scratch and put in fence posts and bring in you know, crushed rock and whatever else you're going to set it on. So that would be my recommendation. And, and, okay. Uh, you know, if they can, if they can get it all, I think in the package there's enough information so they know what they need to put down. Yeah. And, and if, if they have questions, it, I can always, is it okay to share your email address with them? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. But, but I think it's really a good idea to facilitate between Ludlow and, and Lever too. You know, Great, I'll and, go ahead and do a, a soft handoff. Holly? Um, I'm thinking that um, as Pete went down to Waitley to watch the whole process of the disassembling or the assembling um, coming from Hatfields over, um, it would be a great thing to invite Leverett when we actually do our install yep. if they wanted to come and, and see the whole. So if um, you can just you know get that information to this whole group, so whoever's involved with that, um, we can be sure that we include Leverett. Um, and, I, and I think it's a great idea to connect Leverett to Ludlow and hopefully it just keeps on going. Okay, great. Um, that's a good suggestion about having them come observe. Thank you for, for that. Um, the other piece to that is they're not even like an official group yet. <laughs> so I guess they were they're getting their steering committee, I think, or whatnot, whatever their town is calling it, is going to be in effect in February. So, Carolyn? I just, I, I was just thinking, if if you all didn't feel bad about this, um, suggesting maybe handing it off after Christmas, you know, that week before January, because if their incorporation date is, you know, January, or they're doing something in January, they might, the weather we've had such mild winters that you know getting it there before there's actually a lot of snow on the ground might be very helpful to them it's actually a good idea i mean yeah. we would have had the cake for literally from january yeah. almost well the cake would have been moved and we would have the cake sitting there and then we literally would have had it for the entire year so you know, sending it out a, a week or even in mid-December um, before, you know, after, after Thanksgiving when the snow is not come yet, that might be a better thing. I, I think that would actually work well with what the fire department was hoping for too, that they would support us for the year of the celebration, but to have it move on, you know, at the tail end of the year, I think that would be great. So do you want me to suggest um, they, they can take it in November or December? Because November might give them more time, um, you know, without the inclement weather. Is that what you were saying, Carolyn? Yeah, well, I was thinking sometime in December. Well, first off, I started thinking at the end of December, and then I thought, oh, actually, if we can make it through the end of November, you know, Thanksgiving-ish time, um, people start moving on to Christmas. So to me, packing up our cake isn't a big deal at that point, you know? I don't know. I, I, don't know how I you think, you know, that. obviously weather would be a, a contingency. I may be a year that we decide that, you know, it does look like there's gonna be some forecasts and sooner would be better. So maybe just to say a little bit around Thanksgiving and that we could determine a solid date closer to. Yeah. Sure. I'll put that in there around Thanksgiving. 
I don't think any of us would feel bad about that, that we're trying to shorten up the. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, I think it's actually really helpful for them, you know, to avoid any inclement weather, especially going up to Leverett. You've got some steep hills there too. So. Well, I just think connecting it and stuff is so much easier when you don't have any snow on the ground. That'll be the year we have a snow in October. <laughs> A snowtober, yeah. I, I remember that. I don't want to remember that. Say hi. Say and hi. There's also going to be some cleanup for us, too. I mean, that platform and stuff, I mean, you could leave it till the spring, but if if you want to just clear the grounds at the fire department, uh, there is some cleanup that we're going to yeah, need to yeah. do to remove the railroad tires. And Yeah, I think the fire department would be so pleased if we mm -hmm. had to yeah. clean it up before the snowstorm. Okay, so we're going to make a recommendation towards Thanksgiving that that'll be the transfer time. Yeah, I think so. As long as you guys don't feel like we're shortening our year or anything. No, no I think we're good um, on that. All righty. And any other points there? I don't think so. I'll uh, email Ann. I'll let them know if they have any questions um, that we have, you know, you available to answer them, hopefully as much as, you know, best you can. Um, I'll connect Kathy from Ludlow with Ann from Leverett and um, hopefully, you know, they'll be able to work something out ahead of time as well. And yeah, I, I, would I would suggest that we invite them to the takedown in Waitley, not so much, well, I mean, we can do it two ways, either the takedown in Waitley or the setup in South Deerfield. Yeah. It's good to see it in pieces, you know, so, and they're gonna have to do both, so. Both make sense, give them the option. Yeah, and it could be two different groups of people. I mean, you, more people yeah. that know, so you get a couple people commit to the takedown and you get a couple people commit to the setup and combined, you got enough people that knows what's going on. Yeah, Diane? And F can't take videos and sell instructional videos with the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. I mean, I got stills, but uh, sometimes video is helpful. I, have, I, I think this is so wonderful. This cake keeps moving on. They yeah. should do a story yes. about the cake. It really is. Westfield, you know, we really need to thank Harry Rock for, for doing this in Westfield. I mean, this is just phenomenal to have. Okay, moving on then. Um, New business. Friends of Deerfield update. <laughs> So Chris, uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to make it tonight. There are no updates except that we are just waiting on the mail to deliver our nonprofit letter. Nice. So we are approved. All right. It, it's All right. been months in the making, like long time. I guess most of them are going at 18 months right now. So we're, uh, we're doing pretty good. Good. Um, I just want to mention in this update that Peter went to the um, Treehouse Brewing opening, and I did as well. And we, um, you know, for the Friends of Deerfield, hopefully, you know, I, I know Berkshire Brew had already, um, uh, Gary pretty much committed to making some kind of. Um, 350 brew. Yep. Yep. And so hopefully we can get Treehouse. They seem to be interested in our history. They have a, painted history of Deerfield from the dinosaurs to the treehouse opening. So I'm hoping nice. that they will do the same kind of thing. And, uh, and that would be very exciting. Thank you for letting me know. Sorry, I, I opted not to go just with COVID and everything. It was a little bit for me. Well, we could spread out. I mean, I was not very social. I was right at the edge. And poor Peter was on the ed another edge, but I know I was. I think all of us were a little worried that there was too much going on. But it it really was a nice evening, wasn't it, Peter? Yep, I enjoyed it. I'll I'll fill. Uh, Diane, you got your hand up, and then I'll say something on that. Um, yeah, actually, um, I have a question. The friends at Deerfield, 
Have you any idea how much money has been raised from the auction of um, the, the Facebook auction of the different items and also from the painting and the apparel? Do you have any idea how much money you've raised so far? And I'd actually act, like to ask the whole committee, how much money are we expected to raise or is the Friends of Deerfield expected to raise at some point? Um, that we're gonna, we got to figure out. We just have to start figuring how much things are going to cost. Yeah, we are. We already um, established. I think we were looking at one hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars is what the fundraising goal was. Um, but I don't have those figures in front of me for how much we raised. I do know that we have a total. Um, but what we raise isn't there you know there's obviously costs and things like that it's just, um, starting. It's just starting i know i realize yeah that. Just, well we last year was our first year and we didn't have our nonprofit status completed from the irs yet so we're going to be doing most of our major soliciting um in the next few months okay um, good stuff, so. the town um uh, uh diane just to back up a little bit the town you know we interviewed um several different committees and generally, it seemed like everybody had at least like a hundred thousand dollar budget, and um, the town is putting aside. Um, we'll have put aside. We've put aside um, twenty thousand dollars already, and we will this year and next year put a, 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 a about twenty more thousand dollars. So the town is ponying up forty thousand dollars towards expenses right now, which we can. Um, uh, start spending, but uh, if we need to spend money, like whatever. Yeah. But um, the the friends of Deerfield were was hoping to raise at least around a hundred ish thousands of dollars, hundred thousand dollars ish. So we had plenty of money for all these events because you know we want people to participate. We don't want to feel like. Um, the only way you can participate is you have to buy your way into stuff. So we want to make sure we have lots of free events okay. All right. for, for yes. everybody in the community, you know, especially families, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. And now that you have your number, Jen, you'll probably be gearing up a little bit more. Yes, we, we yeah, we've had our number. We're just, we're slowly working. Yeah. Okay. You all set? Okay. Uh, just to follow up a little more on what Carolyn said, um, I had a subsequent meeting with Dean Rowan. With who? Uh, on the 11th of January. With who? Whom? Uh, Dean Rohan. Oh, one from of the partners at the Treehouse. Yep. And we had about an hour and a half discussion. So. <laughs> And he gave me a tour of the facilities, the, the, the park, the, the part that's going to be um, part of the public um, area. The, the, it was, it's a very nice uh, setup now for the, the bar and the extended area around it, but there's also exterior space. He's got a, indoor um, facility, acoustically proper facility for indoor concerts. Uh, he's a musician himself. There is a lot of floor space on the second and third floor of that building, but I'm not sure that that's going to be ready for the 350th because they're doing this in phases. So. As Dean says to me, I got to make some money before I can put any more into this building. They've already spent multiple millions of dollars. Um, they've they tore the whole guts out of the other building, and it's it's quite nice inside. And they're still working on it uh, right now. But um, so we got to talking about the three fiftieth, and and also. Um, in terms of the history of Deerfield and using that facility as a venue for displaying historical um, paintings or 
photographs or whatever dis display kind of um, situations. And uh, he said he was going to take it back to the partners and see if we could make it happen. There's really one really nice location. There's an inside, it's all glassed in, and then there's huge plate glass windows, and then you've got a, an exterior uh, area that people can congregate during better weather. And there's outdoor tables and barbecues and that sort of thing. But there's a long corridor that's probably know, 15 feet wide and 40 feet long with one very bare wall. And I suggested that that would be a perfect place to put up exhibit materials and advertising for the 350th and whatever. So we hopefully we may get more out of it than just simply the beer. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. And he was going to take that to the to his partners and and uh, see you know how much interest it existed. But the that fountain that you were talking about with the painting, the fresco around, was made by the father of one of the other partners. So somebody's interested in history uh, that's close to the to the brewery. So I came away feeling pretty positive about the meeting, and and uh, I think you know as we work closer to that that year in the events and, and get them to buy in. I think it could be a, a really nice um, place uh, or a really nice venue for exhibits and stuff, but also as a place to meet. I mean, there's, there's indoor rooms that you can have small conference in. Um, I think it's, there's a lot of potential there, so. I'm pretty excited. OK, so I had a couple of other things, too. I was going to bring that up. Um, and then um, I had I was trying to schedule a, a meeting with a Deerfield Academy headmaster, but I've not been able to do that yet. Um, I just mentioned you, the meeting. You might want to wait another month. Yeah, it, it, it looked wicked. awful busy. Yeah, no, wicked amount of cases. You don't want to yeah. do um, And then just on the historic uh, working group, um, myself and Gary Sanderson, we've been really doing a lot of extended research on Deerfield Mills, uh, partially in preparation for the workshop that John and, and I uh, will give later in the year for our grant from the Cultural Council. There's a, there's a surprising number of sawmill and grist mills that were scattered around this town that have sort of fallen through the cracks. Um, and some rather um, substantial engineering to pull off uh, to make these mills work, including about a mile long head race um, that was excavated through the floodplains down there uh, to Stebbins Mill. Really? Uh, so if, if you're interested, I'll send you a couple of maps or, or whatever. Jen, did you get the what I sent to you? Yes, I think I should. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, that, that's been going on. And also, and I can't tell you where I got it, but I was going through my digital files. And of which there are about 27,000 at this point, and came across a spreadsheet of all the kids who were born in South Deerfield between 1850 and 1910 that also provides the country of origin of their parents. And out of the more than 4,000 individuals listed in this spreadsheet, close to half of them were born in, their parents were born in Ireland, Ireland, Germany, England, Poland, and Scotland. Wow. So that's a great springboard for research and cultural diversity within this town. So if you or anybody else is, is interested in tackling some kind of project related to any of those uh, groups, let me know and I will gladly share the spreadsheet with you. Well, what happened with the multicultural, multicultural festival or, or gathering that the school thing was working on? 
Has anybody heard anything from them? Uh, I think, I think honestly, everyone has been so distracted with trying to keep up with COVID. You know, they're just trying to keep the schools open. So is that something we don't think will happen then next in the other year? You know what? I think we need to be doing this. Peter, can you, if, let me just send me the, the spreadsheet. I would be very interested and I will try to get somebody, a subcommittee going on this. Well, I thought there were some people who were interested in doing it before, like Holly. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't really have enough well, volunteers. Well, Suzanne is retired now and uh, she retired. And I think, I think Gretchen Lawless is, re I mean, Gretchen Law is retiring this year. She did retire. She is retired. Yeah. Like, like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? Oh, geez. I thought she was going to make it through the school year, but okay. So a couple of people, the, the, the couple of people that seem to be interested, I think that's me. Um, a, the couple of people that um, seem to be interested are actually not in the school at the moment. So um well is that something maybe we want to talk to dig about yes that's what i was thinking about we got to bring it to the parent volunteers and see if we get a little subcommittee from the parents you know because uh, yeah, i can always reach out to lou vincent and just say you know the group that we thought was working on this you know with COVID happening several teachers retired is this something that um dig would be interested in in working on because we got an email and this is why I had asked you, Pete, about, um, you know, whether or not um, you were connecting with um, the Native American indigenous groups that, you know, you had talked to before. It's because we got an email at the Deerfield 350th account um, asking if we did have, you know, um, Native Americans, indigenous peoples working to give input on our celebration. And I did want to have that correlation um, you know, that had happened during our three, 300th, while not the same exact replica of, of having that, you know, friendship reestablished or whatnot, but, you know, kind of redoing that to some degree. And I thought, you know, having the um, Native American educational information provided during the curriculum, and then doing, you know, the multicultural um, fair festival or whatnot, what have you, so I think, you know, it's important that um, that part of the history and the other cultures that you just listed for the, you know, for the folks who were born here, where their families come from, I think it's important to have, you know, all of that represented um, during some part of what we're doing. Well, there's, there's several things that are going on right now. There's good, they're developing an indigenous walking tour of Old Deerfield. And the scripts are the script has already been written. They just need to have a narrator. They're in the process of going through that script, but it's being written by Native Americans. Great. Um, but I'll there's a there's a meeting for um, the Native groups that uh, are working on the Turner's Falls uh, battlefield grants. And I'll make a point of going to their next meeting and just talking to them. Well, um, what about the folks that you had on your email distro list before? Because it well, you those, know, are the, those are the folks. Those are the folks that I had on the list before. Okay, because my concern is also um, which um, affiliation in Quebec is the one that you know was was here last time to kind of reconnect with them as well. Yeah, that was through the, that was through uh, the, the town of the Odenak, uh, it's the Abnakis in, in Quebec. Okay. And I'll have to ask Historic Deerfield, they're the ones that have kept tabs or kept close relationships. It's not been anything, anybody else in town as far as I know. Uh, so it's the Abnaki up in Quebec? Yeah, that's, that's the Abnaki community that, that grew out of the diaspora of Abnakis from the Connecticut Valley and, and from Maine and New Hampshire. Yeah. 
things but I would like have, to. They have maintained closer relations. Historic Deerfield has because they do the the 704, 1704 events and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the folks from Canada that come down for that. And so that keeps that relationship going. Yeah, they list the um the council um Abnaki Onak on uh, they have a website. So I think it, you know, would be be really important to connect with them and invite them to participate in some in some way um, during this process. Let, let me you see know. if I can get some contact information from Historic Deerfield and then oh. well, Matthew should be pretty much a, pretty aware of what of that. Yeah, and if they don't have it, I mean, their their contact information is on the website that they have. So, I mean, I'm happy to cold call. I have no problem with that. Yeah, it, it, it's just easier if they if there's an established relationship and, and you get somebody to introduce you into that community because they're yeah, I'm no, sure that's they fine. all the way around. Yeah, okay. That's fine. I just um, I want to make sure that that's still in process. I think it's really important yeah. to keep that connection. And you know, it's also it would be who of us as a group to figure out what that you know looks like as well during the during that year. Um, I know that the there's those monuments by the library and in uh, north in on Main Street, north part of Main Street, in you know in Old Deerfield. So it would just be be good to have something. Yep. All right, let me, uh, let me see what I'll I can do. <laughs> All right. Um, Thank you, Pete. Yep. So, uh, Carolyn, you want me to send you that spreadsheet? Look, if if any, I, I don't mind sharing it with anybody on the committee. You want me to just send it to all of you? Yeah. 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 It's a pretty impressive. I, I went through and I sorted it all by um, the country of origin. And then I color coded it. So you can actually, if you, if whatever ethnic group you might be interested in, just figure out the color code and then you can look at page after page after page of um, kids born in Deerfield. It's, it's pretty right. impressive. Um, now, I, I, I will say there's a, and I can't remember her name. She's a business manager for PVMA uh, who's got Polish ancestry and she's been, is really interested in seeing where she can go with this too. So I gave her a copy of that probably a month ago and I haven't checked in with her yet to see uh, if she's made that much headway. Oh, but that's wonderful. And don't forget we have the PVMA, um, um, you know, all the interviews that they did uh, a few years ago. Yeah, I have a, uh, I got an inventory uh, from the library of what they, what they had done. Jonathan and FCAT said that he was, and now Jennifer is at the senior center, so it's fantastic. We can try to, you know, facilitate trying to get interviews of seniors, you know, continue that process. Hey, now you're sealed by thunder for my idea. That was new business. Oh. Thank you. Oh, sorry. We've been talking about it for so long. I'm hoping that we can, because you're there, it will actually happen. Yes, that's my goal. Uh, okay, that's all I got to report. So now, now you can talk about the senior center. Um, I think that's the last item on the agenda. You got the steering or the the steering committee report for town. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. There's a couple of other things too. Yeah. Um, where am I? All right, steering. Oh, steering committee. Yes, I had a, a letter. Uh, from the town um, saying that they wanted a, a report from the steering committee for the town report, 
which would be due in there on uh, for March, by early March. Um, last year, um, I wrote up the historic, what the historic working group had done. And I think, Jen, you did the, did you do the steering committee? I think I did part of it. We kind of, we did something. Um, I can look on my, my documents, but I think we put something together and then it got submitted. I've got the old annual, or I've got the annual town meeting book if we need something to look at for that. Yeah. No, I, I, I think I did a segment, you did your segment and some one of us paired it together and submitted yeah, it. You, you probably took mine and just put it together. Um, but I, in either way, but if anybody on the committee would like to participate in this, you know, writing this thing up, I, I think I can handle the historic stuff okay. But, you know, in terms of what, as the committee as a whole been uh, been doing, uh, which is a fair amount of stuff, um, it, uh, I'd welcome any participation. I, I think we should just have a couple mentions of the post office cancellation stamp well, it's supposed to be a look back um, and not necessarily a look forward, but I want, I think it would be important to highlight this post office um, stamp cancellation is um, contest is coming. Um, I really, Holly has put so much work into the parade already. I yeah. Think we need to not just say, oh, well, the documents were approved for the entries of the parade. I think we need to talk about how exciting this, the parade is going to happen. And, you know, we're looking forward towards, you know, the entries and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think even though it is a look back, I think it also should be, you know, making sure that whoever reads it is exciting, excited that it actually the gala now is only, um, you know, not, uh, 10 months away, or yep. 11 months away. We're, we're, we're actually, our first event is in 11 months. You know, that's pretty exciting. And, and we also have two new members to our steering committee. Very oh. happy about that. Yeah, oh yeah. We wanna make sure we put both Kelly and Diane's name on there. Um, hopefully the web page. And that we also have, um, we, you know, we gained, um, funding for Jay's project with creating um, bolts. I don't know how you would like to word that, Jay, if you have something specific, but we could we could put that together. I can take that out of the grant, the proposal. Yeah. Oh, that'd be perfect. Right. Yeah. It's all it's all hands-on learning, basically. Yeah, and I think it's important, you know, we're showing kids, you know, the way things could be made and um, you know, showing them how things are still done, but used to be done more frequently. Um, you know, and I think it's going to be wonderful to have them make it hands on is right. I think it's a little bit more important. I mean, it's somewhat important. I think that we're looking at uh, early deer field, like the indigenous peoples kind of deer field, as well as the industrial deer field that you don't really think about. And then, of course, the agricultural deer field is from the indigenous people all the way up till now. But I, I think, with, you know, food security is such a huge issue that just talking about some of that stuff that spans a little bit more than what the 300s was. The 300s sort of like focused on, mm -hmm. you know, the actual colonial settlement and all that. But I think we're doing a, a much better, like, the entire history of Deerfield. Um, yeah, I think it's important. I mean, you know, looking at what was here before the settlers came, and even if um, I don't know if any of you have gone on the the river walk path over in Sunderland, and how they they have these little plaques that describe certain things, and it was talking about how the continent, you know, could have split along the Connecticut River. And you know, just giving some back history with um, just the geography and everything, and I thought that was great because it shows, you know, like our farming land here and how things, you know, growing and and how that really helped um, those who immigrated here, even you know later on, even way past the settler the colonial settlers, 
um, you know, from, from Poland and other, in Ireland and other countries, you know, to help them farm and, and how rich the soil is. And, you know, so many, so many parts of our country, you know, really, really would love to have what we have here. Um, and it's, it's amazing. Top so. five percent soil in the whole world. Yeah, it's beautiful. Climate, from a climate change point of view, this is going to be the area to live in. We we have the less, the less impactful of so many things. Um, so this is going to you know, our little bubble is quite. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a good bubble. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I think I think that's great. Um, you know, to have all of those details in there. Um, sorry, I, I've had a headache. I think I wore my glasses too long today, so I'm not squinting at anybody in particular if I'm making faces. Um, yeah, there's something else along the lines that you're talking about, Jen, and we had a conference at Eagle Brook two years ago, which was all videotaped. And with a talk about the geology, a talk about uh, the transformation of the landscape, the indigenous stuff, Paleo Indians, you know, and that's still available on YouTube. I think we should link up to those things. We could have the on the website, we could have historic talks and all those other things, and we can create the link to that and, and share yeah. it. I think that's really great information to have out in the public. And you know, it may not be for everyone, but for those who are looking for it, I think that would be really, you know, really um yeah. a well, great Feature yeah. to have. Since it, since it already exists, I mean, there were. Oh, yeah. It was, was an all day conference that Eagle and, Brook. And know. also, I'm wondering if for next year, if um, with funding and taping and things like that, I mean, FCAT might be okay without having additional funding because it is the local media, but um, to have all of those presentations that you give, the, you know, the historic talks have those available on zoom for people who want to participate or and you know offer them after the fact for those who might have missed them no. um, because we can create our own youtube channel and link it into the website that we can put that on the website and that'll just put people there who are interested in it so all those existing ones we can connect offline and get that stuff together. And I can go over that with Marie. Okay, good. Diane, you had your hand up? Like a video library for reference. Much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if we, you know, promote that, that could like those, um, the ones that are already in existence could maybe get, gather more momentum for your historic talks leading up in 2023. So we could, you know, depending on how many are out there now, we could start posting them you know, months before the year, just leading up to. Peter, was the geology professor Little from GCC? Yep. Was mainly he, he's very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting yeah. With what he's uh, described or, or found around the valley. It's very interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, my the, the focus that I had was, uh, I gave one of the talks as well was the transformation of Turner's Falls itself is that in terms of the landscape, in a, in a nutshell, when the glacier left, when Lake Hitchcock left, okay. the river eroded, eroded about 8 million cubic yards of material to expose the falls as it roughly exists today. Wow. I don't mean to interrupt, but I gotta I gotta get my kid from basketball. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, it's okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, um, Jen. We'll we'll try and collect some of these uh, things that already exist and, and have them available for people to look at. That'd be great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, um. And to go to the last item, if you're all set with that last one there for the description in the book. Um, so I am the new uh, South County Senior Center Director. Today was my <laughs> first day. Wow. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> um, 
So one of the projects I'd like to have the seniors work on are doing um, oral histories as well as um, maybe putting together collages to display. Um, you know, it could be something if, if the senior center has a permanent, you know, has a more uh, permanent location during 2023. Otherwise, um, it could be something that hopefully the library or town hall could host um, to put up, you know, tangible items with uh, with various collages of maybe family portraits um, and other things, you know, throughout their time here in Deerfield, whether they've been here for five years or 50 years or 75 years. Um, so I haven't finalized all the details yet. Obviously, this is my first day, so I want to get input from, from the seniors and see what they would like to do um, and to see if they have any other ideas, you know, pertaining to it. But it's um, something that I was hoping that we could get them to do you know, even if I wasn't working there, but um, now that I am there, I can um, hopefully facilitate more of that. Jennifer, I am so excited, I have to tell you, because I think that project that PVMA did were of the oral histories and the stories from all the people that lived here before um, is, is just so fantastic. And you want to capture these stories. And I am thrilled that someone is doing it, you know. Yeah, I um, I think we'll probably be able to do it uh, for the, um, I'm going to see if we can get, if there's some Mass Cultural Council grants that are like on the state levels available, and then if, if there aren't any pertaining to the oral history any longer, um, I'll go for the local one in the fall time frame for this project to start filming in 2023, but just so we can give a stipend to um, you know, to those who might have to uh, for, for participating in filming and things like that. Um, but I really would like to, you know, I, I mentioned it to Jonathan a couple of weeks ago about doing it from FCAT. So I'm going to see, it, you know, how much they can do um, for it as well. I got a couple of other suggestions as well. I've got 250 photographs of houses from South Deerfield in 1900. And if you want some input at, uh, from seniors today, you're probably looking at their grandparents in those photographs because most of the houses have the people that were living there standing out in front of them. That's great. So that's one avenue. The other thing is we just bought a scanner that'll, a high resolution scanner that we can move and I think one of the things that we'd like to try and do is to get the seniors to bring in their photographs. And the deal would be we could scan them for our archives, but we could also give them a, a digital copy of their old photographs as well. That's great. Yeah, that's wonderful. So we just have to set up, we could set it up even by appointments and just say, okay, you know, 10 to 12 on such and such a day who wants to sign up and bring in their pictures and we'll, we'll scan them right there. Yeah, that would be perfect. I think Tuesdays and Thursdays are days that um, if we're going to do by appointment or, you know, because I know we're in the church hall um, from like nine to 1230 is what we have access to. But I mean, we could always see depending on, um, COVID and stuff like that, where it goes over, you know, when it gets a little nicer outside. Um, we'll talk more and get that done because I think that's a great idea. Carolyn? Um, we're, we're moving ahead on the church repairs. Um, so with Deerfield Academy, hopefully. So um, we're hoping in the spring you can move into the church and that will give you a permanent base. Um, and it could use decorations. There's no question about that. In the, yeah, you know. John, I, I saw John Nove over at Town Hall today while I was there. And he's got some great uh, photos from inscriptions that were taken from inside the, um, the, uh, the steeple, at the, you know, with the church, like people writ, wrote stuff or whatever. So I, I had some other photos and I thought those would be great to hang on the wall in the senior center once everything, you know, wherever we land. 
Um, so I think that would be perfect to have for decorations. Yeah, one just, thing I'll, if, oh, I was just going to say one other thing is we're, we're moving ahead with the budget, you know, it's budget time right now, but um, FCAT, we don't use all the money, we don't send to FCAT all the money that we collect for Comcast, we, we squirrel away a little bit every year, mostly to buy better equipment um, at different points. But if, uh, you know, I had already brought this up last year because I really wanted to make sure that we were taping senior stories. Um, that it seems like uh, Trevor and Dave are already in support of if, if there's not enough money for FCAT to come over and do that and you, or you can't get additional grant money, we, we can go into the FCAT budget and try to fund that. That would be wonderful because I think, you know, there's a lot of people who would be interested in having that and we could run um, a small little art type thing at the 350th during that year, find a location, um, you know, whether it may be the library or somewhere else to have people go and sit and listen that are curious to know more. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Marie's also, she could participate in that as well. She, she knows how to film. She used to run a public TV station, so. Wow. Oh. That's she's, a, she's definitely a good asset for us to use, a resource. <laughs> uh, let's see, did we, did we hit, oh, agenda, uh, sorry, I missed one of the things, agenda and posting responsibilities. Yep, I put that on. Um, I would like to volunteer that up for someone. Um, it's time sensitive each month and I, no, if I continue working on the parade, I'm going to be getting extremely busy. Um, and I would like someone else on this group to pick up um, just the draft of the agenda and getting it um, posted through through the town um, office. The, the template for the, gen, uh, the agenda is not that complicated. You just add in, Holly's been wonderful about soliciting, you know, items. That's a job, you know, pain on the neck because you got to put that out. But the biggest thing is, is you got to make sure it gets into the town hall minimum, I would say like a week ahead. Correct. But Holly has been really good about that because it has to be actually posted 48 hours. So, But, but it's, com it's complicated because yeah. right now we're remote. Right. And in order to be remote, it's kind of a multi-step process. You have to get the remote access codes from Jennifer Gannett, and she's been great. Um, someone in her office has been great turning that around. But those links that unfortunately didn't work very well tonight, I apologize for some of you. Um, all those links and the dial-in numbers and the access code for this meeting, she has to establish those. And it's usually the same one every time, but not always, because it depends if somebody else booked a meeting ahead and she's only got two codes. And so what I've been doing is I try to ask her for a couple months in a row um, so I might say our next three meetings are these dates. Could you give me the access codes? And she'll put them in um, and save them for us. Then I get them back. So after I get agenda items from the group, um, then I have to send it back out to the town to post with all the access codes on them. So it is a multi-step process. Easy to explain for someone, but I would just love for someone else to pick up the chore. I apologize, but I don't want to take it on yet because I don't know enough computer. I truly have to admit I would like maybe to. maybe ask Kelly. Um, I can't take any more on right now myself. I just can't. Well, I'll, I'll, we'll table it till next month, but I, I need to get it moved. So um, if you could Kelly, all just Kelly think about be, it. Yeah, Kelly might be willing to do that only because um, I think she's a little bit more computer literate. I'm that, just, yeah. It isn't truly much of a workload, but you have to be on time and 
you have to know your computer. And that's my problem. I'm not, I'm not really, I can do basic stuff, but I'm really nervous about taking out anything that has to do with computers to be responsible for, <laughs> basically. All right, I'll approach her separately. Yeah, she might be willing to. She might Thank feel you. more comfortable. She might feel comfortable enough. Um, with I get Jiggy just trying to get into a Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Holly, maybe the thing to do is just offer to, to work on the, the next one together with her so she can see what in fact goes on and that might make it ease the transition if well, it, she's a little reluctant. Yeah, I mean, she's got to say yes first. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree, you know, but... then of course, I'll, I, I would work with somebody for a couple months, but I just, I need to move this. And uh, we also are in a life situation right now. I hope by spring things are going to be better. And if we do some travel, then I don't want to be tied to a certain date obligation. So no. that's why I'm looking to do that. Okay, um, yep. Okay. All right. I think we've gone through the agenda. It's now 8.28. We're almost at hit our 8.30. <laughs> we seem to go this far. It's time. Hey, last uh, time our meeting was like an hour. We, we rocked it. Yeah. Right, Holly? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a little over an hour, but actually, no, it was less than an hour by the time we got started. So you're right. Yeah, people were exhausted from Christmas. Come on, everybody. All right, <laughs> we I'll were getting it like this. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, second. All those in favor? Hi, Holly. Hi, Jen. Carolyn. Okay, we're adjourned. Yes.